And if you want my opinion on his reaction to uh, all of this, it's very passive aggressive. I mean, here's the, the president. You know, he has no problems giving, you know, arms to Mohammed Morsi, a guy that was the former head of the Muslim Brotherhood, a terrorist organization, and a guy that referred to Jews as descendants of apes and pigs. He'll give him, let's see, F-16s and tanks and and billions of taxpayer dollars. He'll give the Iranians $150 billion, but God forbid you have a, a right to Second Amendment and you have your own weapons. Oh, that's that's hard. We've got to think rethink the Second Amendment. Now, before that, it was my uh, friend and colleague, uh, Greta Van Sustra, just tearing this imam up and exposing him as the fool that he is about stoning adulterers and beheading. Well, some journalists need to be beheaded. Talking in the context of James Foley and much more. Joining us now, Brigitte Gabriel, terror expert, and founder, CEO of Act for America, Amur Zar is with us, Arab-American speaker, writer, professor. Welcome both of you to the program. Uh, Brigitte, I have had these, I have had similar exchanges with imams on this program, on my TV show. Uh, When you start pinning these guys down as to what their real beliefs are, they do believe in radicalism. And then it raises this other question. Under Sharia, if you think you can tell a woman how to dress and you think you can tell her whether she has permission to go to school or to work, if a man can have multiple wives, a woman is stoned for adultery, gays and lesbians can be executed, and you tie it to Hillary Clinton, champion of gay rights, lesbian rights, and 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 women's rights, taking money from all of these countries. You cannot disconnect the dots here that it is it, it is totally and completely hypocritical for her to take that money. They have bought her silence. I want to get your reaction. Well, of course they did buy her silence, and again, when you corner people People when you are debating with them about what the Quran teaches, and not only what the Quran teaches, but the actions of Muslim countries and Muslims throughout the world, uh, they do not know what to say. I heard your fantastic dialogue yesterday, your conversation with the Imam who called you uh, from Colorado, and you put him in such a corner he couldn't even respond to all what you came back to him. Uh, the, when you start throwing the facts in their face, they do not know how to answer. Right now, Sean, the world is truly facing a clash of civilization. Our leaders must recognize that we are dealing with something that's completely opposed to everything we stand for, whether in values, whether in freedoms, whether in a way of thinking, whether even in the value of how they value their own children and their own lives compared to the way we value our lives. That is criminal that our leaders are not willing to stand up and speak the truth about the enemy we are facing, a radical Islam, even though most Muslims in the world are moderate, what we are fighting right now and who is killing thousands of people is radical Islam, and in order for us to win the war, we have to identify our enemy by name. Let me ask you, Mr. Czar, this question. Andy McCarthy argued that the inspiration for Muslims to brutalize and mass murder gay people does not come from ISIS. It is deeply rooted in the Islamic law, Sharia, affirmed by many of Islam's most renowned scholars. True or false? Well, look, I mean, let me start by saying... I- you know, how about, how about, let's that, start by saying answering the question because I that's a very it, it, pointed it, question. Okay, well then then the answer is false. But you want to if you want actually want an academic real answer, give me a second here. As somebody who has studied these things and has taught these things, first of all, there is no one cohesive Sharia law. There's many different schools of thought within Islamic law that say different things about these things. There is nothing in Sharia law that actually talks about uh, death for these sorts of simply homosexual acts. It actually talks about uh, lashing for these things, like in the Quran. But look at the end of the day, I'm a secular person. I'm glad that I live in America where religious law of any kind is not implemented uh, in our legal system. And in fact, throughout all Muslim communities in this country, when people talk about Sharia law, there has never been a Muslim community in this country who has asked for Sharia law to be implemented. Excuse me, but we but we have examples all over. First of all, there, that's not exactly or entirely true. There's been debates in this country about setting up separate Sharia courts, but but that's neither here nor there. In Great Britain, they have 88 Sharia courts. They have, but, but listen, as as much as the media may for deny it, matters, excuse me, for family matters. OK, but but Great Britain setting up uh, a system that does not absolutely mandate full and complete assimilation creates a divide. Now, if you grow up in a country that practices Sharia law and you dictate what a woman wears, whether she can drive, go to work, go to school, four male eyewitnesses needed for rape. Women need in Saudi Arabia, male relatives to even go outside for crying out loud. They can't be outside, seen outside without somebody that's not a relative. And I ask you the question, when we are ascertaining whether to take people in that grew up in this culture, which so contradicts our constitutional 
National Republic, how do we possibly ever ascertain what is in the heart of the person that would like to come to this society, whether or not they bring their values with yeah. them, they desire a theocracy here, want to proselytize okay. us, or whether they prefer to assimilate and adopt American values? That is a fair question. It, it's not an unfair question, but let me say this. The, the premises on which you ask the question are not true. No, so the premises instance, under which I ask, for, sir, you're wrong. The pre, the, everything well, I've no, said you're, about you're, life you and... You, listen, you unfortunately, you don't have the first inkling of academic knowledge about the Arab world or the Middle East. There is no country in the Arab world that fully implements Sharia law. There's countries that implement... Mr. Czar, let's go through the... Fa law. Listen, they listen, listen. I don't have time for your BS, and I'm going to go through this very quickly. In Saudi Arabia, can women drive a car? In Saudi Arabia, can women drive a car? Yes or no? Saudi Arabia is a terrible... I'm asking you... Society. All right, well, let's no. go to a, let's go no. to Iran. In Iran, let's go to Iran. How are women treated in Iran? How are women treated in Brunei? How are... Uh, what is the law in Brunei, Saudi Arabia, uh, and Qatar as it relates to gays and lesbians under Sharia? Doesn't it call? Doesn't it allow execution? Yes, yeah, it no, does. No, no, yes, it does. Act, no. In but Oman, actually, you're, excuse you're me, right. in right. Oman, don't they allow genital mutilation of women by law? Yes, they do. In Saudi Arabia, women can't drive. I'll answer the question for you. In Saudi Arabia, women can and are told how to dress. And under the Taliban in Afghanistan, they decided if women could go to school or go to work. True or false, sir? Absolutely not the case. That no. is absolutely the case. You don't know what you don't know what the hell you're talking about. 1.7. No, no. I, unfortunately, unlike you, I you are extraordinarily ignorant and you are defending. Unfortunately, you are lying and deceiving the American public because remember, you have another Arab who speaks the full classical language with you on this interview and that is me. So don't give us the lie that Sharia is not implemented in Islamic countries and don't give us the lie that the Quran doesn't say anything about gay people. I'm holding in my hand uh, the Quran right now and the Hadith and, and Sahih Mr. Mizi is very specific about what the Quran says. The Prophet said, quote, kill the one who sodomizes and the one who let it be done to him. That is very clear. You cannot mince words here. You have to realize that you can fool some of the people some of the times, but you cannot yeah. fool all the people yeah. all the well, time. So, the American so, so, so public is waking up and realizing Gabriel, that we are being fed Gabriel, a, a, a bunch Gabriel of garbage and lies any, by Ms. Arab Gabriel and Islamic pundits coming on television issues. lying to us. She, is not, she has not studied any of these issues. She doesn't teach any of these issues yes excuse me exist, excuse me is, she, whoa, whoa, stop, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, listen you have now tried to insult me now you're trying to insult my guests i have known brigitte gabriel she has been a guest on my programs for over a decade she knows more than you are even beginning to touch on the surface about and your ignorance here or perhaps your propaganda i don't know your true motivation is breathtaking the fact that you won't even acknowledge simple basic known truths tells me that you've got some other agenda who likes to live in a secular society that's who i am but what i'm saying is yeah you like you to live. talk about these then talk about, talk about life these... is it or is it not true that gays and lesbians as a matter of law in saudi arabia brunei and Qatar, can be executed is that true or false sir uh, under certain circumstances they do do that that's correct i'm saying oh uh, so i'm telling the truth is arguing nobody is arguing it, that we all right so let's go back to the basics can can, can women in saudi arabia drive a car sir what we're arguing is about america no i'm this asking you very pointed Most questions i'm asking you whether People or not to this i am asking case. i am asking whether women can drive a car in saudi arabia what does the law say do you even know of course of course i know that they can all right but are women is, are women under sharia law let me finish are women under sharia law told how to dress law, man. you so, don't know anything about all right it, get, get off my phone you're just you're just ignorant i have no time for you insulting me and insulting our guests brigitte tell everybody how many years you have studied sharia and radical islamists listen i not only studied it and made it my mission to understand it because i'm a victim of islamic terrorism when the islamists blew up my home when i was 10 year old little girl in lebanon and ended up living in a bomb shelter for seven years of my life from the age of 10 till the age of 17. I made it my mission as an adult to understand why people do the way they, the, the, the 
things that they do and why Islamic terrorism was spreading like wildfire and they wanted to kill people like me. And that's when I was in the Middle East. I became news anchor for World News in the Middle East between 1984 and 1989, reporting on world events and the rising of Islamic terrorism. I followed it through my life because it affected my life. I read the Quran in Arabic. And by the way, I was a news anchor in the classical Arabic airing throughout the Middle East every night on Middle East television reading the news. So for someone to say, oh, you don't understand what you're talking about, you don't understand the Middle East, what, what these liars in America who are trying to deceive the American public with their uh, uh, high foot Luton scholarly, I'm a secularist and I'm in America and I love America, instead of them lying to the American public, they need to realize that there are plenty of brilliant people from the Middle East who do speak the Arabic language, who's, by the way, in my case, my mother tongue, who can understand and debate them on these issues. And also, and aren't they, d- doesn't he sound like somebody that is literally have an agenda that wants to lie on purpose? You hit the nail on the head. This is somebody with an agenda. This is somebody purposely lying and trying to debate you. For him to say that Saudi Arabia does not uh, practice Sharia law is baloney. For him to say that in Brunei, Sharia law is not followed is baloney. These are facts that even uh, the, the least no. educated in America at least understand how uh, the way of life right. in Saudi Arabia. But that's why, Sean, the American public must mobilize, must understand what's going on. I encourage people to go to our website, actforamerica.org, and join us. We are the NRA of national security. We are mobilizing the country. Go to actforamerica.org no. and join us. Brigitte, thank you for being with us. I mean, it's so insulting to one's basic intelligence. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, we do. We don't lie on this program.